Hello again. Today, we're going to be tackling this monstrosity. A family member reached out to me and asked if I could help, so of course I said yes. I don't think I need to get too much more into it, so let's get to work. These tile walls were just placed on the drywall, no waterproofing of any kind, so I just took an SDS with a tile scraping bit, kinda cut them down into nice squares and then removed them as giant pieces. This just made the demo and removal of material a lot easier. Floor tiles came up with just the slightest of nudges. <laughs> really love when that happens. Of course, the thin set was a little more strongly adhered, but the SDS made quick work of that. Because the vanity was going to get shifted over to the left, I had to reroute the plumbing. So I just took a skill saw and pried up this section of the subfloor so that I could get access. This section here was a bulkhead, and I thought for sure there'd be something underneath it, but there wasn't, so it seems like it was purely an aesthetic choice to drop down that section, so I just raised it back up to create a nice flush ceiling. With the walls all down, I could get a look at the electrical, and it was not nice. There were buried junction boxes everywhere, the exhaust fan wasn't vented, and there were just devices doing absolutely nothing, so it all had to be reworked. The existing window had to be replaced, so while I was at it, I figured might as well relocate it so it's not half in the shower and half out of it. The siding was being done at the same time, so this just made sense. Here I am framing out the new one centered with the location of the toilet. It would have been really nice to relocate the toilet and window to be centered between the wall and bathtub, however, that was outside of the budget, so I made do with what I could. I ran some ducting outside and then put up this new 100 CFM fan. And here is a basic overview for the electrical. It all starts with this green wire, which is the feed into the bathroom. It goes to this junction box, which is lightly screwed in to the side of the joists there. Now, typically, buried junction boxes are a big no-no. You don't want to do that. However, I can get away with it in this instance because there's going to be a recessed light there, meaning if you ever need to access that junction box, you can pull down the light, stick your hand up, grab the box, and pull it down to work on it. It's important to note also that I still need a cover plate and staples at this point. So one wire comes out of that box and feeds the receptacle you're seeing here. The other wire comes out and feeds my two switches. From there, we now have steady power at the switch box, so we take one wire, we go up and feed the exhaust fan. We then take the other wire, we go up, we feed the pot light, which then feeds the next pot light and feeds the last one. Pretty straightforward. Then I began insulating this exterior wall. Now, I advise you to go out and buy some new insulation 
don't be like me and reuse what was existing, but desperate times. And take some vapor barrier, some tuck tape, and seal it all up. This is the framing for the niche. I'm gonna have a double niche centered with this back wall of the shower. So I'm putting in some new studs and then taking out the one that interferes with my spacing. I then take these cross pieces to act as the bottom of the niche, the top and the middle, and I pitch them inwards towards the tub. That way any water will run off and be directed to our drain. Then I began closing up the walls. This is just half inch mold resistant drywall and it's always nice in a project when you can start closing things up. It just makes it feel like you're finally progressing. Trigger warning, if you are afraid of shark bites, I suggest you skip forward, close your eyes, and just remember, they can't get you through the screen. You'll be okay. Anyways, here's the plumbing. Everything is pitched downwards for the drain. And for my mixing valve, it's just pecs with O-rings crimped on with half inch copper for my tub spout. And I got a brass nipple in the shower head, just as a temporary measure. For any of my larger gaps in the drywall, I just took some hot mud, some sheetrock 45, and pre-filled all of those gaps. Then I began the mudding and taping process. <sighs> you know. Anyways, moving on. For the cement board, I take a utility knife and cut the ends and snap them wherever I need to, and then use a drywall saw to make any of the special cuts. For my cement board, I actually sit it on top of the tub flange and then later on tape and cement that. For the back of the niche here, I PL in these pieces and then install the side pieces. I think after doing this, it's probably worth it just to spend the extra money and get a prefab niche. Then I take the special mesh tape, put that on all my seams, and then just use some thin set to seal it all up. The green tape you see on the bottom of the tub there that's from where I peeled back my plastic layering enough so that I'd be able to get my cement and tape directly onto the tub. I didn't want to peel back the plastic too much though, so I put down that tape to kind of just make sure it doesn't come back any more than it needs to. Once everything had time to dry, I take a cheap $2 paintbrush and begin applying Red Guard into all my corners and hard to reach spots. I then take a paint roller, apply the rest of it, wait a couple hours, and then do a second coat. Because the first row of tiles is so important, I take a laser and mark it out to make sure everything's gonna be nice and level. I flip my first row upside down and mark where that line is so that I can rip them down to size and then when I go to install them, I simply flip them back over and that cut edge is now facing the tub. For my tile profiles, I went with the Schluter Quadec in white at 3 8 inch. This way it just matches the depth of my subway tiles. The tiles themselves are 4 by 12 inches and I used 1 16th grout lines because, well, who likes giant grout lines? I'm using a white thin set because there are so many grout lines and it just kind of reduces the amount of work you have to do the next day when cleaning out those lines. I'm using directional troweling to install all of the tiles, and then once actually placing them after back buttering each one, moving them to collapse those ridges and get good coverage. I used a grinder to cut out my mixing valve and a diamond hole saw for both the tub spout and shower head. The trowel size I went with for this tile was 3.8 inch square notch.
the center area where I'm placing my mosaic strip, I use the same Schluter profiles to separate between the subway and the mosaic. See, the mosaic was actually thinner than the subway tiles, so I needed something to kind of transition to adjust for that difference in depth. Then for my niches, I took a piece of sill tile for the bottom to get one big piece where the water could simply slope off of towards the tub. And then I took the subway tiles for the top and sides. I used a thin metal profile to hide the edges of those subway tiles and then just continued with my mosaic up using a 5 16th v-notch trowel. Then I primed everything. I hate this part. The grout here is Laticrete Permacolor in Silver Shadow. I apply it with a grout float, working it into all of the lines, taking off the excess at a 45, then taking a damp sponge after about 10 minutes and getting rid of any excess. Then about half an hour or so later, I take a dry microfiber cloth and wipe down and remove all of the haze. With that done, I could finally remove this disgusting tub uh, plastic liner. And anywhere where it kind of got stuck with uh, thin set or grout or whatever, I just kind of took my utility knife and cut below the tile. Really want to make sure we don't scratch the tub at this point. The paint color here is Planetary Silver by Bear. I take a brush to cut in all of my corners, edges, whatever, and then a roller to do the rest. Uh, only going about halfway down here because I am doing a wainscoting. Went with a brush nickel finish for the fixtures in this bathroom. I think I probably prefer chrome, but this did work out nicely. And then my tub spout wasn't a slip on, it was actually a thread on, so I had to break out the soldering kit to put that in and just using the head that came with the kit although we'll probably switch that to a wand at some point. This was my first time installing click flooring and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Just a super simple process and very quick. I probably could have used like a self leveler for the floor but the finish came out just fine so I mean it really wasn't necessary in this case. The product here is Home Decorators Collection, Moon Shadow Oak, a <laughs> very cool name guys, and just working my way through this really quick. To get the first row nice and straight with that tub, I just took a tape measure and marked out where my first row kind of had to end, and to get it nice and flush there, I put in some screws towards that left wall and, and pushed my first piece into that. Here is the process for how I did the wainscoting. The first thing I want to note here is that I actually used MDF, which you should avoid putting into a bathroom. I, however, am a bit of a bad boy, so I did this anyways. I ripped my MDF boards into two different sizes, the first being five and a half inches wide, which you're seeing now, and the second at three and a half inches wide. The first pieces, you'll notice I have some ripped down two by four behind. I did this to add some depth, so I ripped those pieces to quarter inch, and that just gives a little separation between the bottom piece and everything else. In hindsight, I think I should have used 3 8 inch or even half inch to add just a little more depth, but it still worked out okay. To secure everything, I'm simply brad nailing it in, no need for PL in this instance. And for the gaps between my vertical slats, there's no set distance. I kind of treated each wall as its own space to just work with what I had, and I think it turned out okay. So 
since this vanity didn't come with a backsplash, I opted instead to kind of create my own. So I had these leftover subway tiles and I thought it would be cool to incorporate them in to the wainscoting in vanity as kind of like a whole piece. So I kept the distance of my top rail exactly four inches from where my vanity top was. That way I could just fit in the tiles. And do not worry, I made sure that you could still fully open both drawers on the left here with that piece there. It's all good guys, I promise, it's fine. Lastly, I put on these top pieces here. They're ripped down to inch and a quarter, and I think they just add a lot of depth and kind of give it a finished feeling. I took some PL, glued them down, and then also secured with brad nails. Here I'm taking some wood filler, filling in those gaps, let it dry, gave it a light sanding. I definitely could have done a better job in this, but at the end of the day, this is a budget bathroom. I think the wainscoting in total cost something like $60, so there's no need to get really fancy with it. Then taking some caulking and making everything nice and flush, all the corners, the drywall, and painter's tape along the top there to get a nice crisp line with the, uh, the difference in paint. I put on two coats of primer for these and then two coats of just a white trim paint. Uh, obviously, if you're a smart, intelligent person, you'll paint before installing all of this, but of that, I am not. Also, if you really wanted a great result, I think you would use a sprayer, but I don't own one of those, so I may do with good old fashioned brush. When it comes to silicone, typically you can get a silicone that will actually match your grout color. However, they didn't have any stock, so I went with the next closest one and it turned out okay. I like to use painter's tape to get those nice crisp lines, although whatever method you want to use, it's totally up to you. I also applied some to the separation in mosaic and subway tile as I had some jagged cuts along the glass mosaic. Uh, and I just kind of use the silicone to hide that a bit. I mean, it's just something that I can improve upon in the future. Putting in this window trim really highlights how out of plumb that wall to the left is. I probably should have just reframed the whole thing, but it is what it is. And I'm not completely happy with the trim I selected for this window. I think it's just kind of boxy, kind of ugly, but it's not the hardest thing to replace. And of course, if you have males in your household, go ahead and get a toilet that hides that ugly crevice area. We all know the one.
Hello. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that, whatever. And I'll see you next time.